What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and another Oscars 2022 ranking video in the lead up to the awards. First we ranked all the best international feature nominees and today we're talking about my ranking of all five best animated feature nominees. So let me know in the comments what your ranking of the best animated feature nominees are. As always this is just my list and not a definitive ranking. And to be clear, like the best international feature nominees, I actually liked all five of these films. I gave all of them at least a 7 out of 10, and I think they're worth watching. Also make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these videos, as it helps me out immensely by getting my content out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more movie related content on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time, and let's jump into the list. At number 5, Encanto, Disney's 60th animated feature film and the predicted winner by many of this category is unfortunately not exactly as impactful as I think it should have been for such a landmark film from the studio. While it did spawn one catchy song, that being We Don't Talk About Bruno, which ironically was not submitted for Best Original Song, the rest of it, while entertaining enough, feels like Disney was playing too much into their usual bag of tricks. And don't get me wrong, it can be funny, there's great representation on screen, the animation's vibrant as ever, and Lin-Manuel Miranda's songwriting, while maybe not his best, is solid enough. There's a charm to it, especially with its fast-paced nature and great voice work from Stephanie Beatrice and John Leguizamo that will put a smile on your face. However, it's yet another Disney movie about someone who's viewed as an outsider by their family who then has to step in and save the day and save them all from some sort of danger and they all grow closer to one another as a result and so on and so forth. It feels very been there, done that for them. While there are great lessons for younger audiences in there, and there's some broad appeal that the whole family will enjoy, I just wish Disney started moving away from this formula as it begins to feel a bit too by the numbers. At number 4, Luca. Pixar's coming of age tale once again sees what the animation giant is known best for doing, and that's give us a relatable story told through fantastical elements, in this case being a little boy who's also a sea creature. Set in the Italian Riviera, the animation captures the setting beautifully, as per usual from the studio, and there's a gentle touch that pervades through the film, giving it a heartwarming feel, both through its amusing sight gags, as well as its themes regarding acceptance and finding your niche. Now granted, with all that being said, it's not what I'd call Pixar's most ambitious film to date. While its themes are relatable, its approach is so gentle that the conflict feels relatively low stakes, without any huge dramatic moments that will bring you to tears like some of Pixar's other works. And that's been used as a knock against the film, calling it a lesser effort from Pixar. And while, yes, I wouldn't quite put this up there in my top 10 of Pixar's films or anything, they've certainly done much better, I firmly believe a film can be thoroughly enjoyable without always having earth-shattering consequences and that's how I ultimately feel about this. It might not be the most far-reaching Pixar film out there, and that does hold it back a little bit, but there's plenty in there to enjoy. At number 3, Raya and the Last Dragon, one of the closest films we've ever gotten from Walt Disney Animation Studios to a full-on action movie. While this has drawn some comparisons to Avatar The Last Airbender due to its deep mythology that involves a number of warring kingdoms, this stands firmly on its own as an engaging story that acts as one part personal tale of finding your place in the world and one part grand sweeping action epic. As per usual, the animation is absolutely stunning, with the landscapes captured through eye-popping visuals. And while like Encanto, this does see Disney playing into some of their usual bag of tricks, it wasn't quite as prevalent here. The biggest comparison is that Aquafina's Sisu takes on the role of the fast-talking sidekick breakout character that became more of a thing in each of Disney's animated films after Robin Williams in Aladdin. But even with that, I still found the character to be quite enjoyable and very funny. Plus, the action scenes were slickly put together and nothing short of gripping, making for a fast-paced adventure. This is probably one of the heaviest your outings we've seen in recent years from Disney Animation, though honestly, I hope we see more films from them that are on this grand of a scale. At number two, Flea, the animated documentary that mixes sequences of the film's subject recounting his past experiences, along with recreations depicting haunting subject matter one normally wouldn't be able to capture in a documentary. The animation here takes on more of a sketch-like quality, trying to operate on a less is more approach, where maybe not every little background image is the most detailed, but everything in the foreground, primarily characters' facial expressions, are vibrant. I also like how the style would change according to the overall mood, with some of the more 
more nightmarish sequences being depicted as something of a blur. This also allows the film to not feel exploitive in its approach, as it's the gentle conversations between our subject Amin Nawabi and director Jonas Power Rasmussen that guide the film forward and make sure we don't lose sight of telling a story so personal. And while this ultimately is a personal story, it also looks to recount the refugee experience and get us to rethink how we view it as we see it through the eyes of those who have to go through it. So it's a film with something truly powerful to say, and it's almost certain to move you. But in first place is The Mitchells vs. The Machines, which easily goes down as the most bonkers entry on this list, but in all the best ways possible. Produced by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, while they may not have had a hand in the screenplay or the direction, their personal touch can still clearly be felt all throughout this, taking a page out of the same book as films like The Lego Movie and Into the Spider-Verse, and running with it to the nth degree. And that leads to some truly eye-popping visuals and a ton of jokes thrown at you at the rate of at least one a minute. It's a very hyperactive animation style with an energy level that might go past an 11, but it's hilarious all the same and endlessly entertaining. But this is also not all style and no substance. While it does hit the occasional familiar note as part of its plot is meant to be a parody of films like The Terminator and every other technology gone wrong story, at its core is a heartwarming tale about family that will resonate with all audiences, though it'll especially provide some valuable lessons for younger audiences in between all the gorgeous animation and non-stop jokes. It's not only my favorite of the best animated feature nominees, but it was also my favorite animated movie in all of 2021. So stay tuned, as up next I'll have a ranking of all 10 of the best picture nominees. But in the meantime, let me know, what's your ranking of the best animated feature nominees? Did you agree with this list at all? Did you disagree with it? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film.